Number 11 then, the last question in paper 2 of the 2017 New Hair Mask. There we go, trig identity. It's a six mark question here. First part's the trig identity. The second part is just do something with it. Trig identity. Used to get them all the time, way back when. Not so much for a long time. And this re-emergence here of trig identities is actually quite a simple little one. The steps really are quite obvious. It's an identity in that this is true for all x. Well, under a given domain. It's not an equation which is only true for certain values of x, in which case you've got to solve it. If you try and solve an identity, you'll just end up with 0 equals 0 because the two parts are identical. Anyway, the usual technique is start with a more complicated one. So let's start with the left hand side. I know I'm just going to write it out again, which seems a bit silly because it's right there in front of me. But if you were doing this in the exam, it wouldn't be there. Well, it is now, of course, isn't it? Because you're right on the paper. Anyway, I've done it now. And then you just have to look at this and think, what's this got that you don't want? Because this is what you're aiming for. Well, I don't want causes, so that'll have to go somehow. And I've got a double angle, and there's no double angle there, so that'll need to go. So the first obvious thing is, get rid of that sine 2x. So that can turn into 2 sine x cos x. And of course, having done that, that simplifies that considerably. At the same time, I could do the next bit, but I think I'll just leave it. Because I know I also don't want that cos squared x. But having done that, that cancels down just to sine x. I've got sine x minus sine x cos squared x. Now there's two roots here. You could now remove that cos squared because you know sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That's usually the abbreviation you just write for your own purposes. S for sine and C for cos. So I could replace that with 1 minus sine squared. I'll put it here. But I'll just wait because I can see I've got factorisation. Because another thing I notice is this side's got two terms. That side's only got one. So how can I reduce that down, take out the common factor? So you've got sine x times 1 minus cos squared x. Now that's just going to go by itself. Because the other rearrangement of that would be sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. So that's just sine x times, ooh, where'd your x go? Times sine squared x, and there you go, sine cubed x, which is the right-hand side. Although they don't seem to want you to specify that you've achieved the transformation apart from just getting the answer you need. And sometimes you finish that by saying, as required. Or if you want to go to old school, you would say, Q-E-D, that which was to be demonstrated. Now I've just rushed through that without the marks. The first mark was for explicitly expanding sine 2x. The next part was for simplifying it and factorising it. And the third part is for that substitution to get rid of that cos. Then part B, hence, so it's related to the first part, differentiate that same expression again. You'll notice I didn't mention before that little disclaimer there about the possible values of x, because you've got this division after all. So you don't want cos, to be, cos of x to be zero, for instance. And it has to be a one-to-one -one correspondence, so that's just in the first quadrant. Anyway, differentiate. Now, how are you going to show you're differentiating? Because you can't just put equals, you have to say you're differentiating it. So you can either give it a name, f of x equals, y equals, then f dashed, or divide by dx, or you can show it this way. d by dx of it stands for to differentiate this expression. Well, obviously, you can't differentiate that because you don't know how to differentiate a quotient or a product. But you know you don't need to because that is the same as this. So it's just going to be differentiate sine cubed x. Knowing to change it, which is staring in the face there, gets you a mark. Now, what's the derivative of that? Remember, sine cubed x is a function of a function. That's sine x all cubed. So the derivative of that will be the outside first, three times whatever it was squared. And what was inside was a sine x. Doing that, it says, gets the first mark. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is a cos x. And apparently, 
That gets the second mark without needing to rearrange it into any order. I think I'll just finish it off. So that's 3 cos x sine squared x.